Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this CMS application using ASP.NET Core 3 and Angular 10. In the last video tutorial, we created the required components that we would use in our Angular application. We, in this video tutorial, will be working on the routes of these components. So we will be implementing routing in our application. So here if you notice in our application when it runs when we try to access the components that we just built like res register in this case I have a register component I will be redirected to the default view that's because I have not implemented routes in this application so my application does not know what to do when somebody tries to access the path forward slash register or the register path Similarly, if I try to access any other component like login or home page or any other component, I will be redirected to the default view. To fix this, first thing that I'm going to do is go to the app.component.html uh, file, which is located in the main app folder. I'll go ahead and delete the component or delete the contents of this file. By doing this, I will see a blank page now. And I don't have since I don't have any content displayed on the app.component.html file, my browser does not display anything on the default view. Next thing I want to replace uh, the contents that I just deleted with the router outlet. So I will add a tag called as router outlet. So I open and close this tag over here. Now doing this basically means that now we are going to display the output of the each router that we are going to call on the app component itself. So if I call the home component, I will see the home output. If I call the login component, I see the login output and so on. The next thing I do is go to the app routing.module.ts file. Here I have an empty routes array. Inside this routes array, I'm going to declare the routes that I'm going to use in my application. But before I declare these routes, let's go ahead and add few more routes that we forgot to add. In the user folder, you notice that we have a user component. Now, the user component is not a single component. We have different views that are nested within the user component. For example, the user profile, the user settings, the user activities and so on. And if you decide to add more views to the user component, you can add them. But as I mentioned, the user component itself has many nested views inside it. Therefore, this user component should have its own route, routing module, like we have the one for the main app. We should also have it for the user component itself. So let's first go ahead and add a routing module to our user component so that we can add some individual routes which are only related to the user component. So I go to the terminal and inside the terminal, I type in the command ng generate module that is m i specify the component name which is user and i sp specify the flag which is routing by doing this i'm going to create two files inside the user component so as soon as i hit enter these two files are generated if you look at it you will notice angular is following the similar pattern that it does for the main app module as well it creates a user module file and a user routing file so in the user routing module file here we'll have a routes array that we will use to declare the individual routes that belong to the user component. So as of now we don't have any individual routes or components that we have created. So let's go ahead and create them inside the user folder. So to create the individual component I'm going to type in the command ng generate component and I want to create the component in the user folder or the user component. I want to call this component as user profile. So I hit enter. Now I will have a folder called as user profile or a sub component that is user profile created inside the user component which is the main component. This user profile component will have its own individual files like CSS, HTML and TS where we can manage the output accordingly. We also need a user settings view and we also need a user activity view where we can display the user's activity. If you plan to add additional views like user payments and so on, you can add them accordingly. But for this video tutorial series, we will be working only on these three views. 
So now we have created these components. We have an individual route file for the user component. Let's go back to the app routing dot module. Here inside the route array, we are going to declare the routes that we are going to use so that we can navigate in our application. So let's go ahead and create these routes. So I have added the following routes inside the route folder. So the way we declare routes is we specify a path property, the name of the path and the component where you want to redirect the request to. So for example, in the first path, if a user types home, the request tries to match the appropriate path in the routes folder. And since it finds home path declared in the routes folder, it will redirect the user to the home component. If you go to the home component and open the HTML file, here you see that's the content of the home component. You will see that content over here as well because I tried to access the home component. Now, if I go back to the app routing module and here if you notice, I have a blank path. That's because in an event where somebody wants to access the home page, but I don't want the user to always type forward slash home. Even if they don't specify that they don't want to go to the home page, I will still redirect them to the main page. So yeah, if I hit enter, I will be redirected back to the home component once again. Here at the end, you will see I have declared home component once again. That's because if anybody tries to access a path like this, which is not defined in your routes array. So if a path is not defined or undefined, the request will be redirected to the home component. So as you see, I've been redirected to the home component. Keep in mind that this path should always be declared at the very end. So in your application, if there is any path that is not found, then the default path will be the home component. So if you try to put contact us after the uh, default path, you would no longer be able to access contact us. If I try to access contact us, so I should put a comma over here and remove this comma. So now if I try to access contact us, I'm not able to access contact us even though contact us path is declared. That's because I have declared it after the default path. So as I mentioned, you have to always make sure that you declare contact or the default part at the very end. So now as I change the positioning of the uh, contact us path, I will be able to access it. So keep in mind, it's very important that a default path should always be declared at the end. Now here you notice I have declared all other paths with the appropriate components and here for the uh, user component, I am loading the children. I've used the load children property because we have multiple components inside the user components. Also, I want to lazy load the user component, which means that when my application loads, all the contents of this path will be loaded. But I don't want to load the contents of the user uh, component because user component has many paths related to it. And when the application load, initially the user who's trying to access our application has not yet requested to view the com components like user profile user settings and so on so if they have not yet requested for a particular component that is part of user component then we should not load it so this is called as lazy loading unless and until the component is requested we don't load it so as soon as the component is requested we will load that component in this case my account so you can see that I see a blank page that's because in the user routing module I have not yet declared any routes. So when I try to go to the my account path which redirects us to the user module the request does not know what exactly to do with it because there is no paths declared over here. So we see a blank page. If you go to the inspect tab, go to console and let's see we don't see any errors. We don't see any errors and we don't see any redirect to the my account because if we go to my account, what do we exactly want to happen? We want the user to be redirected to the user profile component or the user profile view that we created. So let's declare the paths over here so that we when call the my account path, our app routing module will redirect us to the user module and the user module will redirect us to the appropriate path in the 
uh, sub component that we have created so here you can see that I have declared the paths that are related to the user component and when a user does not specify any path and it's left bank so we redirect the user request to the user profile component and if there is a path declared like in this case my account then we redirect the user to the user profile so here if we don't specify any path we will be redirect to, to user profile and if we declare a path like activity in this case then we will be redirected to user activity and if we declare settings then we will be redirected to the user settings view so we are lazy loading this view which means these views or these components are not initially loaded because they were not requested once my account is requested then these components will be loaded by angular application so what have we learned in this video tutorial we in this video tutorial have learned how to implement routing and how to lazy load the routes uh, using modules routing modules so once again all the code for this video tutorial will be provided in the devops repo the link for our devops repo is in the video description and if you have any question use the comment section and do not forget to like and subscribe our channel tech howdy